Southern California is famous for its commitment to health culture. Kale chips, juice diets, the works. But what about East LA and South Central? Instead of finding a Whole Foods, you're more likely to see a Jack in the Box or a Carl's Jr. For the sake of cost and convenience, residents resort to fast food family dinners. And with heart disease and diabetes being in the top three causes of death in both of these neighborhoods, the old saying holds true, you are what you eat. I think a lot of people don't even realize it. They don't realize what's happening to their, to their bodies. They don't really, we have grade school kids having heart attacks in LA Unified. You know, and you don't, you don't hear that on the news. Um, you have type two diabetes, which is preventable, preventable diabetes. It's all, it's food related. So having that diet too often um, can lead to the heart disease, um, the high blood pressure, the high cholesterol, the diabetes. Just a few short miles from the ocean, SoCal experiences its own desert known for its lack of nourishment due to low access to fresh produce. These are food deserts, and they see the most health problems manifest. On every street corner, drive through restaurants with high calorie menus are seen just feet from residential neighborhoods and schools. So when you live in a neighborhood that's considered a food desert, it's, it's it's not only challenging, it's, it's impossible to if you don't have access to the foods that are necessary for maintaining a healthy diet. Now we are eating a lot worse than previously because people took more care about what they ate than they do now. Now people work and work, and because of that they would rather go to a fast food restaurant because when you're working you don't have the time to prepare a healthy meal for yourself. But income and geography are only some of the factors at play. In certain communities, is a, a low or lack of awareness of, of general health issues as well as how food is linked to them, so how your dietary behavior can affect your health. So when you're looking at a food desert, a neighborhood that's considered a food desert and how it impacts health, there's so many other contributing factors than, than just the lack of um, healthy food. We're being occupied, terrorized, in our own communities, you know, by, um, by food companies. Although the issue is deeply rooted in these communities, small strides towards progress are being made. The Ramirez Market, a family-owned corner grocery store, is working to promote fresh produce. I think our market is good because in this area there's a lot of obesity and a lot of sickness because we don't eat well. And now because we sell fruits and vegetables a lot closer to these homes, it's easier to come here and see all the fresh produce like fruits and vegetables and then want to buy it. But market makeovers are not enough for some. Ron Finley, who is known for his garden graffiti, is taking his mission to the streets and empty lots of East L.A. I figured that the, the problem is the solution. Food is the problem and food is the solution. I had a passion for not letting my food kill me. You know, I think your food should heal you, not kill you. So I took the, 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 the what they call a parkway in front of my home and I plan to, instead of mowing the grass and throwing it away and doing it again and using chemicals to keep it green, because it has to be green, um, I removed the couches and the mattresses and the condoms and the trash from my parkway, and I planted food. And it was like the, you know, the Red Sea had parted or something. You would think it was a miracle. And this commitment to change isn't going unnoticed. We have to make sure that we go into the communities and we make the healthy choice the easy choice. I think that's a key message. You know, Mother, nature is art. And I mean, you, you, as you look around, you see the different colors, you see the different smells. I wanted people to be assaulted by smell. I wanted people to be like, I wanted their eyes to be dazzled by color. And so it's not just, it's, it wasn't just food. You know, I tell people, I don't grow food. I grow people because everything happens in the garden. Poverty-stricken areas have a long history of unhealthy habits, but grassroots efforts are turning food deserts into an oasis of hope and nutritious change from the inside out. For the Mustang Morning News, this has been Julia Arcega, Megan Harger, and Wesley Smart.